Hi, are you researching rare disease and working with new mutations? Have you ever used G2P? G2P is Genomics to Proteins Portal, and you can use it to map genetic variants to a protein structure. I'm going to quickly go through an example today and show you how it works. We'll use G2P to generate a hypothesis, and we'll try to figure out how mutations found in a paper could be causing a disease. So first off, we're going to use the interactive mapping tool, and we'll look into clark Baratzer syndrome which is a rare inherited neurodevelopmental disorder. In the paper, a group of researchers looked at this gene called TRYP12, and we found a set of new variants all associated with the disease. They explained that they had used a computer vision model to look at different facial structures and phenotypes to see if the, pa if the patients had a gestalt, which is characteristic of the disease, and could identify new patients. So our first question is, what are these variants on the protein structure? But super conveniently, I can scroll down in the paper and I can see in the supplemental data section all of the author's data. They attached the variants they found and a lot of different phenotype data that they got gathered across all of the different patients, which is also going to be useful for us so we can look into different trends on the protein structure. So I pulled out a few mu missense mutations and we'll take them over to G2P to analyze. So first off, let's go to interactive mapping and select TRYP12. I can see that there's only one existing experimental structure, but it's only 45 amino acids long. To have better coverage, let's select AlphaFold. TRYP12 has about 2,000 amino acids, so this structure is covering less than 5% of that total. Instead, I'm going to go and select the AlphaFold structure. Next, I'm copy uh, copying the variant data over and we're ready to analyze. Okay, so the first question is, are there already disease mutations that have been reported for TRYP12? And if there are, is there any connection between those mutations and the new ones reported in the paper? So the first thing I'm going to do is load in the HGMD mutations. HGMD stands for Human Gene Mutation Database, and this database works to collect all inherited mutations that are responsible for disease. So let's map. For some reason, all of the new mutations from the paper are showing up in a different area than the existing HGMD mutations. Although the structural positions of the newly reported mutations are distinct from the HGMD mutations, do they share any common features? We'll explore. Let's look at NOMAD. NOMAD is a database that keeps track of population variants. So those are population, those are variants from the general population. And when we map them, the variants are just about everywhere. I do see these empty spots in the core of the structure, which are right around our disease mutations. You can see that there are hardly any NOMAD variants in this middle area, where in comparison, there are a whole lot of NOMAD mutations on the front surface area. Okay. So our new mutations are definitely clustering. So let's see what else, what else we can figure out. So first, we're going to map known domains. And going through the domains, I see that actually one mutation is sitting right in a HEC domain, which is found in a lot of ubiquitin protein ligases. So this domain is tied to regulating ubiquitination and protein degradation, and so is this specific mutation interfering in some way with the protein degradation pathway? So let's add the ubiquitin sites. And it actually really lines up. You could see that these mutations might be interfering with all of these different ubiquitin sites. And actually, if we go and add the HGMD mutations, we see that they're also close to ubiquitin sites. And then if we look at the nomad regions, like this region up front where we know there were a lot of nomad variants before, I don't see any ubiquitin sites in the whole region. Okay, so to wrap up what we saw today, first we saw that the researchers identified new mutations for clark baratzer syndrome and published their results. We mapped the mutations to TRYP12, and we found that they targeted specific areas of the protein, and yet not the same areas as the HGMD mutations. We saw that the new mutations coincided with the known HEC domain, and finally we saw that the mutations coincided with ubiquitin sites across the protein. That's the end of our analysis, but to start yours, go to g2p.broadinstitute.org 
and you can map variants from your research to a protein structure. Thank you.